door and turn on the key. <laughs> so if something goes wrong, I got to admit, you know, something's wrong with this car. So I got to take it to a mechanic. Or if I start getting sick, before I go to the doctor, I got to, you know what, something's not quite right. And I have to own it to myself. I better get to a doctor. If I have a financial issue, you know, I got more bills and money to pay. I better go and sit down with somebody who can counsel with me, get me out of this spot. Every problem you have, begin. the answer begins when you confess the problem exists. That's right. That's right. And it's the same spiritually. Even for religious people. That if we're going to know for sure we have eternal life, without a doubt, we got to get to a point where we're willing to confess to ourselves and to the Lord that we need it. Amen. That Romans 3.23 means me for all of sin. The second step that he shared was Acts 3.19. And it says basically, repent then and turn to the Lord that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And the key word in that verse is the word repent. Now, we don't use repent as often as we use confess, but it, what do you do when you repent of something? If you had to explain the word to a little child, what do you do when you repent of something? Turn away from it. Yeah, well, you guys are good. Exactly right. And some would say it means to be sorry, but it means more than that. It means to so sorry that you're willing to turn or change. So if if I'm walking through um, the woods and I get a little disoriented and I stop and I say, you know what, I confess, I think I'm lost. Which is very hard for some of us to ever admit. <laughs> and and I, say, I don't think this is the right way. That's confess. But then repent is, you know, this is the wrong way. I am going to turn and go this way and I don't want to ever go that way again. The Bible says for us to know for sure we have eternal life, there has to be a willingness to turn from the things we know are wrong. We don't need some preacher to tell us. We know they're wrong. They're there and we, they shouldn't be there. We know it. The Holy Spirit's convicted us of it. If we're going to know for sure we have eternal life, we got to be willing to to turn from those things. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. So we got confess, we got repent. The third step he took me to was a verse you all know. John 3.16. Quote it with me, will you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the key word there is believe. Believe in two things. Who he is and what he did. The son of God. Not just a good teacher. Not just a good moral guy. Not just a good philosopher. Son of God. That's what he claimed to be. So, so either he's a liar... Or he is who he says he is. And that he died on a cross for our sins. He took our place. If we're going to turn, if we're going to say to ourselves, this is wrong, this is not the way I want to go, I want to turn away from this, then you got to answer the question, which way are you going to turn? Because, guys, there's all kinds of options out there. That's right. There's all kinds of voices out there saying, turn to me, turn to me, turn to me, I'm the way. Materialism. Cults. It's endless. But if we're going to have eternal life, we have to be willing to turn Christ's way because we believe the Son of God who died for me. Does that make sense? So, what's the first step? Confess. What's the second step? What's the third step? Does that mean for sure that we have eternal life? Well, you know, I know a lot of guys that will confess. In fact, they're kind of proud of it and tell you about all about it on Saturday night. You know what I mean? 
or, or maybe Sunday morning when they ought to be at church. <laughs> and I know a lot of people that will repent at least in that they can't go to bed at night until they hit their knees and confess all their sins they did that day. But they don't have an assurance of eternal life. They can repent till the cows come home, as we say in Indiana. It doesn't mean a hill of beans. It takes more than repent. And you know what? It takes more than believing. Because you know what the Bible says? Even the demons know who Jesus is. They're, they don't have the assurance of eternal life in heaven. There's got to be something else. And there is. In John um, 1 12, St. John 1 12, it says, To all who receive him, who are called by his name, he gives the right to become children of God. And the key word is receive. Now I've asked Jordan. Is it Jordan? What is it? Jody! Nuts! I'm always. I'm always doing that. I can't get through Sunday without putting my foot in my mouth, and now I'm doing it on Saturday night. <laughs> Jody, come on up. Jody has offered to help me. And Jody, if I remember, you said you have two kids at home, yes. a son and a niece. That's right. Okay. And uh, we're coming into uh, the holiday season. Christmas starts earlier every year, right? I think, right. I'm waiting for the day it shows up in the 4th of July, you know, <laughs> when uh, we start getting ready for Christmas. And let's say uh, Jody goes to the mall, Valley, <coughs> Valley View Mall, and she gets her all her plastic out. She gets a uh, Visa, MasterCard, and uh, Discover Card. <laughs> and, and I mean, she's hitting all the stores because she wants to give her son and her niece this exciting, and maybe, I don't know, maybe some parents and some other folks, this great, great Christmas. And, and she just goes nuts. And she goes home with almost like a pickup truck full of stuff, you know? And they have the greatest Christmas. Everybody's happy. But something comes in the mail that suddenly brings her back to reality. What is it? A bill. A bill. A bill. And let's say, I mean, she... By the time she was done, smoke was rising up off her credit cards. You know, they were glowing almost, you know, because they run it over so many times. And and uh, and she has really blown way beyond what she can handle. Let, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, let's say five thousand dollars. <laughs> that's a that's a good Christmas, right? And and uh, she's oh man, you know what she does? She confesses. I mean, I've blown it. I've blown it. And and she comes. Let's say she comes to me, and uh, she says, you know, Pastor John, I, I've blown it. I've blown it. I've, I've, this is what I did. She confesses. And then you know what she does? She repents. She says, I'm never doing this again. In fact, she's so sorry, she takes some scissors and snip, 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 snip. And now all those credit cards are on a, on a, on a pile on the floor all cut up. And now, uh, Jody, I, I'm going to use this pen that uh that i happen to have and let's say it's a very valuable pin you're all gonna have to use your imagination okay uh and it's a big pin so you're gonna have to have a really big imagination what's the color of that pin okay gray let's say i describe this pin to uh jody and it's gray and it's got this writing and it says big uh round something or another it's kind of rubbed off, whatever he said. And it's got this cap, and I think it writes uh, black ink. And let's say this thing is worth 10000 bucks. Let's say it's the last big round stick in the world. <laughs> okay? So it's worth, and I, and I tell Jody, Jody, I'm going to give you this. Okay? Out of the kindness of my heart, I want to give it to you because I hate seeing people jammed up. Now, if I told you I was going to give this to you in all sincerity, would you believe me? <laughs> that, that's, 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 that's the wrong answer. <laughs> oh, are you sure? Yes. Okay, all right, now you know. Thank you, Jody. 
So, after all that and that second chance, she's confessed, right? She's repented. All the credit cards are down on the floor in a heap. And she has finally agreed to believe. Okay? Bless your heart. <laughs> it was a lot of money. I should have. I should have made the number smaller. After all of that, who still has the pen? You did. You did. And who still has the bill? She does. She does. Now, I don't want to force this on her. I don't want to cram this down her throat. I want to treat her with dignity, love, and respect. So I take this pen, and I, and I reach it out to her as far as my arm will go, which is this far. What is Jody going to have to do if she really wants? Reach out. Now it's hers. See? Now it's hers. Now the, the need can be met and have a ton left over to do other wonderful things. Including pay her tithe because I just gave her ten thousand dollars. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now I know that's simple. I know that's simple, but that's exactly the the way it is with this eternal life in Jesus. It's a matter of if we're not sure where we stand with Him, it's a matter of reaching out, just like Jody reached out for that pen and receive it in. Now I know what somebody's thinking because I used to think it. But Pastor, you don't know how dirty my heart is. I mean, if, if, if you knew and if the Lord knew how dirty my heart is, he would want nothing of it. But that's not true. There's a verse in the Bible. It's in the last book of the Bible. In fact, I saw a picture of this verse in your foyer, in your, in your church building. It's right there as the first thing you see when you walk in the door. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, the door of our heart, the door of our life, Jesus says to every one of us under this tent, I will come into you and fellowship with you and you with me. That's a promise. It doesn't say, you know, when you feel little warm fuzzies going up and down your spine. It doesn't say when you hear thunderclaps and see lightning bolts. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say when you have this, you know, euphoric out of body feeling. It doesn't say any of that. He says, matter of fact, God's word. Anyone who opens the door, reaches out like she reached for the pen, and reaches, I will come in. And the Bible says, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever doesn't have the Son of God doesn't have life. It can't get any clearer than that. So how do we do that? We do it in prayer. We go to the Lord in prayer. And this is exactly what that friend did with me. He led me through those four steps. And, and this is what we said. Uh, he, he, he would say it and then I would repeat it. And he would say, Lord Jesus, I confess my sin. Simple as that. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. And Lord Jesus, I turn to you because I believe you're the Son of God who died for me. And right now, by faith, I open the door of my heart. I open the door of my life. And I invite you in as my personal Lord and Savior. And so I prayed that simple, simple prayer. And Jesus came into my heart some 30 years ago. And we've been walking together, not perfectly. I've had to ask forgiveness many times. But we've been walking together ever since. Whenever I get out of line, I ask forgiveness get right back on line. I want to pray that prayer with you tonight. I'm going to invite you once again to all bow your heads with me. 
close your eyes. Every head bowed, the way I could. There were many of you who felt like you knew for sure you had eternal life, but you weren't quite as sure on how to answer that question. Why should you be let in? There's only one answer. Because you invited Jesus in. There were some of you that were so honest, you were willing to say with an uplifted head, I know, I know, I know that I don't have eternal life. You can know before you leave the tent. Amen. There were many of you who said, I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. You can know. That's why the book was written. Yes, yes. So if there's a doubt about it, I don't care how long you've been in church. If there's a doubt about it, I want you to pray that prayer with me. You don't have to pray it out loud. Just pray it in your heart. Are you ready? Pray with me inside your heart. Lord Jesus, just repeat that inside your heart. Lord Jesus, I confess my sin to you. And Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. I want to turn away from what I know is wrong in my life. And Lord Jesus, I turn to you because I believe you're the Son of God who died on an old rugged cross for me. And right now, by faith, I open the door of my heart I open the door of my life and I invite you in as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. With every head bowed, every eye closed, please honor me. Just me and the Lord looking around. If you were able to pray that prayer and sincerely mean it in your heart, would you just be willing to slip your hand up I want to pray for every person. Yes, keep them up. It's going to take me just a minute. Keep them up. I don't want to miss one hand. It's going to take me just a minute. Keep them up. Keep them up. Okay, you can put them down. Lord Jesus. Right now, I want to pray for 10 people who raise their hand. And what I'm asking you, in Jesus' name, that your Holy Spirit right now would bear witness with their spirit that God's word is true. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and fellowship with him and he with me. And the word of God says, whoever has the son has life. That means for people who just prayed that prayer, according to the word of God, Jesus is in their hearts. Some prayed that prayer maybe for the first time in their life. Others maybe rededicated themselves to something they did a long time ago. One or the other, right now, Jesus is in their heart. And the word of God says, whoever has the son has life. Now, Lord, the enemy is just waiting right outside this tent. And the first thing he's going to do is, there's nothing to that. There is nothing to that, what that preacher said. You are the same as you've always been. But that's not true. When we opened our heart to Christ, we also received his Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit can help us to walk yes. this life and to stay away from those things that we have turned away from. Help, I pray. Help these people to walk in this relationship. Because it's, a, it's not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing relationship with the one who loved us enough to die for us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now listen, let's stop. Not quite done. Right now, all of you, whether you raise your one of the ten or not, I want you to think of your best friend. Wait a minute. Chris, I need you to cut, cut that off. I want you to think of your very best friend when you were a little kid. All right? 
you're gonna have to some of you are gonna have to work pretty hard because that was a long time ago for some of us for others it won't be so far okay <laughs> Let's say that that friend, maybe this actually happened to some of you. Let's say that good friend, their dad, was transferred and, and flew out to California. And you never saw them again. You never went out to visit them. They never came back to visit you. And let's say, you know, you were young. Let's say you never wrote to them. They never wrote to you. You never texted them. They never texted you. Um, uh, no communication. No communication for 20 years. I could go beyond that, but let's just keep it 20 years. What would happen to that relationship? What would happen to it? Would you agree with me, given what happens in 20 years from being a little child to a young adult, would you agree with me you could pass that person on the street and not even know it was them? The same things that build a relationship with other people are the exact same things that build a relationship with God. Prayer. Our way of talking to Him. Communicating to Him. And if we don't do it, it's like climbing into a plane and flying to California. God's Word. Reading God's Word. His primary way of talking to us. And if we don't do it, it's like climbing that plane, flying off to California. Church, God's house. It's like when you go visit, you go visit each other. You feel going to church, going to God's house strengthens that relationship. And I know that Matt and his church wants to help all of you to grow in that relationship. It's why this church exists. Everybody on the same path, heading the same direction, trying to encourage. This relationship, this journey with Christ, listen to me now, it's not meant to be taken alone. you gotta, you got to be in community. You need each other's help and encouragement. That's what Matt is all about, and that's what that church is all about. And the fourth thing that helps in this relationship that 10 of you have recommitted to or, or just started, is what I call witnessing, sharing Christ. It's crazy. The more you give Christ away, the stronger Christ becomes in your heart. When we say that our faith, listen to me now. I'm right here. When, when we say that our faith is personal and private, that's only half true. It is very personal, but there is nothing private about your relationship with God. In fact, there's a verse in the Bible in Matthew 10, 33, where Jesus says to all of us, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in heaven. If you declare me before men, I will declare you before my Father in heaven. Now, what's a relationship that you're ashamed of? What's a relationship that means something to you only behind the closed doors? Jesus died publicly for us. And he calls everybody to live publicly for him. So this is what we're going to do. That's why I do it parkway every time I share this. And I've shared this thing about a million times. Some of you probably <laughs> maybe heard me share it before. We're going to make what we call a public commitment. Well, what is that? Well, I'm going to come down right in front of this post right here. I'm going to stand right here on ground level. Now, this is going to take some gumption. It's going to take a little bit of courage to do what I'm about to ask you to do. But if you're one of the ones that prayed with me right now, the only people on the face of the earth that know what you did is you one of the strongest things you can do to solidify what you've already decided is to come I'm going to invite you to come in front of all these people you don't have to say anything you don't have to do anything and I'm not going to point you out this is between you and the Lord but I know it's going to take a little something I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat we're all going to stay seated 
You're in a safe place, right? Yes. I'm going to ask you to come down, and I'm going to ask you to shake my hand. And then I'm going to ask you to stand by me. And say by standing, I'm on his side. I love you. And I'm going to do my best to serve you. That would do more than anything to help solidify what you did just a few moments ago. I know it's going to take some gumption. Are you willing to do that for him? If so, I'm asking you to do it right now. Good, 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 good. Thank you. think every hand I saw up is up here. But there might have been one or two that I it's hard to see all the hands. So I want to say this to anybody who's still out here and not up here that might have raised your hands. Listen, listen, listen to me just for a second. Coming up here isn't what saves us. Jesus saves us. When we invite him into our heart and mind. Now for whatever reason, maybe you didn't feel like you, you were safe enough to come up here. And that's okay. If that's you, I want to invite you to do something. There's other ways to be a witness. If you raised your hand and you didn't feel like you could come, then uh, before your head hits the pillow tonight, I'm going to encourage you to call somebody. Chances are there's somebody that's been praying for you. And you would bless their socks off. I wish they wouldn't be able to sleep. If you would call them and share with them, hey, I just wanted you to know I rededicated my life to Christ. Or I gave my life to Christ for the very first time. Would you incur would you consider that? If if you weren't able to come up here. Um it's been a good night. If, if you guys or if anybody here needs a good church, it's right over there. Right, man. Right. And if any of you need a good pastor, he's right there. Amen. I would encourage you if you haven't if you haven't had a chance to meet him, probably all of you know his real name. And he's very young. Did you know that? He's very young. So um, if you haven't had a chance to greet him, greet him. I'm going to let you guys head back to your seat, okay? Let's give them another good round of applause. Way to go. Way to go. Kind of 13. Somewhere up here. That's my eyes. I'm getting old. <laughs> I, I, I want to I wanna ask this. Out of the 13 that were up here, um, how many were very first time commitments? Let me see your hand. Just first time commitments. I see one. Anybody else? And the others, I assume, were recommitments, right? <laughs> This is what I want to tell you. 
We have a new believers class that we just started a couple of weeks ago. And so tomorrow morning at 945, right here in this church, that class is going to take place. And if you are one of those 13, that either this is your very first time giving your life to Jesus, or this is a recommitment, there is not a better place in this world for you to be tomorrow morning at 945 than in there and in that class, learning about the God that saved you tonight, and learning about the man or woman that he has created you and desired you, designed you and desires for you to be. Amen. And so I want to encourage you to be here. Jody, stand up. Jody is the teacher of our of our foundation class. We call it the foundation class. And so I want you to talk to her tonight if, if, if you want more information about this. 9.45 tomorrow morning. See her. She will give you more information about it. Thank you so much for being here. Listen, if you do not have a home church, I want to invite you back here tomorrow morning. 9.45 Sunday school, 10.45 service out here. We're going to have coffee. We're going to have hot chocolate. And um, we're just going to have another great time around the, around the tent here. Let me also say this. If you are from Parkway Westland and you came to hear Pastor John tonight, don't you dare come here tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> because he will have my young hide. <laughs> and if I ask him to come do this again, he's going to tell me no. So you go back to Parkway. Okay? You come tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in here and hear Pastor Jeff Keaton. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to invite you to stand with me. Let's close out and just thank God for a great first night of this tent meeting. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much, God, for who you are. And God, I'm so thankful for what that, for what you did on the cross 2,000 years ago, that it is still relevant in 2018. And that it's still the cross and the shed blood of Jesus that can save a sin sick soul. And so, for, so Lord, I just thank you. For, for being that Savior to 13 people tonight. God, I thank you for bringing them home where they belong. Lord, I ask that you would help them to grow in the relationship with you. God, help us as a local church or whatever local church they're a part of to do our part in discipling them and nurturing them into your church. Lord, I thank you for your presence. Lord, I thank you for your messenger tonight. Lord, I ask that you would be with Pastor John. I ask that you would bless him and that you would bless Parkway. And may they have a great day tomorrow. May we have a great day here at Jordan Town tomorrow. God, we praise you and we thank you for all that you've done tonight, God, and what you're going to do tomorrow morning and what you're going to do tomorrow night as well. Lord, we praise you ahead of time. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's roll. I'll see you in the morning.